It is auspicious awareness for Dharma practitioners to remain mindful that each and every event presents opportunities for empowering wisdom energies to arise and abide. Then, as insights blossom, long-held perspectives and self-oriented attitudes will often transform in unexpected ways. The Buddhist path ultimately leads to a mind irreversibly awakened. Closer and closer that awakening comes until, at some point, it will be just one moment away, one thought, one understanding, one more insight. And who's to say when that consciousness tipping point will occur? For most of us, it is likely many lifetimes away. For some, it could be within the next hour or minute. And the hows and whys of its arrival and our reactions to it depend on no one but ourselves. One of the joys of sharing Tibetan Buddhism is watching its effects arise in the minds of those who so naturally engage in the teachings and practices. I'd like to relate a conversation I had with a friend. I'll call her Pema, referring to a lotus flower in Tibetan. Pema asked if I had a few moments as she wanted to share something with me. She related how, two weeks earlier, she received some very bad news from her doctor's office regarding some test results. She called it devastating and left it at that, but did indicate it signified her having entered the final stages of this life. This news had occurred on a Thursday and she had set an appointment to meet with her doctor to discuss treatment options on the following Monday, four days later. Four days of not knowing the whole story. Four days of uncertainty and fear, imagining the worst. Four days of living with the probability, I am now dying. What would you, dear listener, do with this news? What would your next 100 hours be like? Imagine the loneliness of being unable to talk about it with others because you don't yet know all the facts or the words to say. The inescapable reality that a fatal something appears to be growing inside you and has made its presence known. Your life is soon going to end. So much to lose, so many goodbyes to say, so much unknown. Everything about Pema's life seemed to change. Nothing was the same anymore. In the hours following her news, Pema experienced a range of fierce emotions, moments of acute uncertainty and fear, the eternal conflict of what is self in trying to imagine how things would be once it ceased to be, struggling to accept the unthinkable, the end of her life, the end of herself. But not all emotions remain purely sad or frightening. Something else began to take place. Pema explained how at some point she thought of and then turned to her Dharma practice. She reflected on impermanence and decay, the emptiness of our existence, and how she was simply journeying through the magnificent process of birth and living and dying and death and rebirth. She understood she's merely moving from one bardo to the next as she always has been, as we all are. As acceptance of her predicament gradually emerged, so did an instinctive confidence. And within that confidence, a sense of opportunity arose, an opportunity of, as she described it, joining the dance. During that time, she said, she came to a decision. She was going to spend the rest of her days engaged in living her practice, preparing herself and those around her for what was coming. Generosity, the first paramita, She was determined to show her loved ones that there is little to fear in death. That while it is not what she wanted to happen to her at that time, she was increasingly becoming at peace with it and was going to use her path through it to teach and comfort others, 
all of whom will one day be in a similar situation. The evolving confidence of generosity. On Monday morning, Pema went to see her doctor and was told, with great apology, that there had been some confusion in the lab and the test data originally reported was incorrect. The results attributed to her were actually someone else's. She was perfectly fine. Her tests were normal. As she explained, and as you might imagine, Pema felt enormous, almost overwhelming relief. Those four days quickly went from being lived under a death sentence to now seeming like a surreal dream. She is fine and always has been. Those days were no longer relevant in any material way. Or were they? Surreal or not, it all had happened. And through Pema's difficulty, much had been processed and learned. Dharma intelligence and experiences had been attained in an intensely personal way. She felt tremendous appreciation for the teachings and the brilliant practicalities to which they lead. It had been an unforgettable time, transformative, she called it. And with a deep smile, she explained that not only is she confident she will never fear her own death again, she doesn't really think she's going to fear much else either. But then, as a soft frown came upon her, she grew quiet. After a few moments, Pema spoke of how, not long after getting her good news, she realized that the errant test results were based on someone else's health. Someone who right at that moment might be learning their own results were not normal, as they had been told last week. That they were, in fact, disastrously ill, fatally perhaps, so mortally real, just as it had been for her. Tears came first to Pema's eyes and then mine as we sat with the suffocating sharpness of fear and torment that person and their loved ones might be experiencing. Our shared silence ended as Pema softly whispered the word gratitude for her exposure to the Buddhist Dharma. She spoke of the preciousness of being able to intuitively feel and cry for someone else during her own time of intense personal relief. To not just rejoice in, I have escaped, but to naturally put herself in the place of the person who hasn't escaped and cry for them, conscious enough to be experiencing and welcoming the lovely pain of pure compassion for someone unknown. She spoke of the beauty of emerging from absorbing self-centeredness, becoming someone who, even in a moment of intensely joyful personal relief, is open and able to have her heart break for someone else. And she attributed it all to those four days of fear and the dharma she instinctively employed to navigate through it. Pema has broken through, evolving into the essence of a being who not only aspires for her mind to work in this way, but has through a difficult ordeal come to learn that it can and will. She now knows she is firmly on her path, her practice manifesting, her intuitive perceptions and attitudes recalibrating from me to us. This is the middle path curriculum of the Mahayana way, to recognize with great joy and gratitude the perfect isness of how things are, while at the same time our hearts break for those experiencing the suffering that is also so much a part of it. Pema is now well on her way but it took a very difficult encounter for her to truly experience that. Working through a profoundly fearful time led her to understanding, understanding to acceptance, and then acceptance to growth. And when good news eradicated her fear, authentic joy instinctively merged with open-hearted compassion 
and a brilliantly genuine path open before her. Certainly, Dharma energy, that which Lama Thupten Yeshe many times referred to as nuclear due to its explosive mind power, has the ability to inform some of our most deeply held attitudes in the most superb of ways. This recording was written and shared here by Mark Winwood. Mark, that's me, is a member of the teaching faculty at Naropa University in Boulder, Colorado, and is the founder and principal teacher at the Chenrizik Project, a Tibetan Buddhist study and practice group with an active presence via online Sangha gatherings, publication of our ongoing e-magazine, and these Elegant Mind podcasts. If interested, you can learn more about the Chenrizik Project at our website, www.chenrizikproject.org. That's C-H-E-N-R-E-Z-I-G project.org. We'll welcome your inquiries. Our accompanying music, titled Jellyfish, was composed and performed by the San Francisco Bay Area musician Bobby Vega. It appears on his 2017 album, Matters of the Heart. Bobby's reputation for feel is legendary, and with this album's music, he shares how transitions and melodies can be expressed in creatively new ways on acoustic bass, where slight variations in feel, touch, and timing can speak emotional volumes. You can learn more about Bobby and his music at his website, www.bobbyvega.com that's b-o-b-b-y v-e-g-a dot com or as he's very findable online you can simply google his name or look for his numerous videos on youtube we remain grateful to bobby for his friendship his talents and his generosity in sharing his beautiful music with our dharma audience please feel free to share the link to this podcast with those you feel it might resonate. And as always, thank you for listening.